Welcome, Welcome to the Josh Hall Web Design Show. Web Design Show, helping you build better websites and create a web design business that gives you freedom and a lifestyle you love. Hey, everybody! Welcome to episode twelve. This is an interview with a local colleague of mine, Doug Diber. He has done something that a lot of people aspire to do, and it might be something that you are interested in one day, or maybe you're just curious about, and that is selling your business. Or more specifically, in this case, we're going to talk about selling a service-based business because that's exactly what Doug did. He had a videography business that he ran for years, and then he had an idea for a, a product, a SaaS product, a service as a software subscription product. And that really picked up some traction and he was able to sell his service-based video business and transition to running this app, this product full-time. And it's called Magnify. It's actually the tool that I use to capture all my video testimonials. And it's interesting because Doug and I have been colleagues for a long time. We've actually worked with each other for years. I did. I was kind of his trusted web guy, and he was my trusted video guy. So we were passing referrals back to each other for years. And then again, more recently, he actually sold his business. And then I became uh, a customer of his with Magnify as I use it. And then he actually hired me originally to design the site. And we still do some maintenance and things for him. So... That's been our relationship, and this talk, we actually get into the weeds of selling that business, because I, for one, was very curious about what that looked like, like the mindset, the ins and outs of selling a business. You're going to hear all about that. You're going to learn some really practical things to look out for. If you're interested in selling your business, you're going to hear about some things that you should definitely do if you want to eventually pivot yourself to be able to sell your business. And you're also going to hear some things, some some kind of lessons learned that Doug is very real and transparent about that I know are going to be super valuable. So if you're interested in selling your business, you are going to love this episode, even if you're not to that point yet, or you're not even thinking about selling your business, but maybe it's just something you want to learn about. That way, if one day the, the time comes where you can sell your business, you have a reference point, this is going to be a great episode for you. Before we dive in, this episode is brought to you by my web design business course. Since we're talking about selling a business in this episode, my business course will be the best opportunity for you to be able to learn how to start, build, and successfully grow your web design business. And it's based off of everything that I've learned and my decade of experience up to this point with building and running a successful six-figure web design business. We cover everything, all the ins and outs from start to finish with this course, from proposals, contracts, invoices, project management, collecting content, revisions, feedback, client relationship. I mean, everything that is involved in a a web design project from the business side of things is covered in this course. I also offer a, what I like to call my client roadmap, which is a checklist from start to finish from when a person becomes a new lead to being a client, to the whole project management process on the client side, to handling revisions, to offboarding and all sorts of things. And it'll be a checklist that you can use because if you are gonna wanna sell your business one day, things have to be documented, things have to be very organized and you need to have some solid systems and processes in place. And that's exactly what my web design business course will provide for you. So check that out if interested. All right, guys. Enjoy my interview with my colleague, Doug Diver, on how he sold his service business. Cheers. Enjoy. Doug, welcome to the show, man. Well, uh, thanks for having me, Mr. Uh, Josh Hall. And a hello to all the, the let's see, is it, is it Josh Hall dot co, the, the Joshaholics? I guess <laughs> I haven't <laughs> heard that. Enough. Josh, the Joshaholics, man. You may have well, come up with an uns- <laughs> unsettling new term yeah, for my following. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a little, yeah, a little, yeah. It's <laughs> of, of joshhall.co. <laughs> well, I tell you what, man, this podcast has, has been a welcome and cool addition to uh, somebody left a review and said the podcast, they love it, adding it to the Josh mix with tutorials yeah, and yeah. blogs and everything else, but... I've had a really fun time doing it so far, and I'm really excited about talking with you right now, Doug, because we talked about this before even I even launched my podcast. I said, I want to have you on and talk about what you're doing right now because you did something that a lot of web designers are probably interested in, or maybe they're just curious about, which is selling a service-based business. So. Yes. 
Yeah. You're running Magnify. You're doing, uh, which is more of an app-based business right now, which I know we're going to yep. talk about. But let's let's just get right into it, man. Yeah. Crossing River Studios, your yep. your previous company that you sold. Tell us about that, and then like, did you did you set out knowing you wanted to sell that one day, or what happened there? No. So like, so I started Crossing River Studios back in January fifth, two thousand and five, and took on way too much debt. To uh, because I mean it's a it was is a Crossing River Studios was a video producing video marketing agency, right? So, produce videos for clients, but then also show them how to bring those videos into the real world, right? So, and so ran that for a long time, and I eventually wanted to make um, feature films. So eventually, what I wanted to do is get into filmmaking, and I have a bachelor's in film, minor in theater. So that's kind of the the path I wanted to go to, and so <clears throat> and really originally kind of changed for me when I decided I wanted to get a business coach, right? So like, cause I reached a level in my, in my business where it was just, it was just kind of me, right? I am sure a lot of your, 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 your listeners can relate, right? It's just them. Right. And I'm like, okay, I've plateaued in what I can do myself. Mm. And in order to go to the next level, I, you, you don't know what you don't know, right? So hiring that business coach really helped me <clears throat> expand my mindset, right? Because that's the biggest thing that holds any business owner back is just mindset. And uh, getting that business owner mindset, not uh, not business practitioner, right? Mm. You, know, you, you have, you can do all this stuff yourself, right? And you're the best person at doing it. And my business coach really helped me um, expand my mindset to find people that are better than me at specific aspects of the business. So hiring somebody that, um, or in my case, we, uh, we, I didn't have any employees. It was all contract people. And cause for me, I found that the, the, my space was not the MySpace app, but in my space, <laughs> <Your space. laughs> yeah, gotcha. in my space, um, the most talented people were really kind of working for themselves. And so by the guy who I hired to do a lot of the uh, higher end filming uh, and studied director of photography in, in London and super good, like blows me out of the water. And a uh, guy that I hired to do um, uh, editing or animation and graphics to buy and cross river that, that's you know the one with that story but i hired him to do all that stuff right because could i sit there and fiddle with it for forever it take me like 16 hours you know two days just trying to do one thing where you can just go boop, boop, done right mm. so um i got to the point where i was like i said to my business coach i said you know i could care less if i could if i ever made a video again in my entire life because I liked really like the I started to like the business aspect of it, helping clients develop that strategy, help them create the the outlay for what the video would look like, and then having the team to piece it all together. And maybe your your the people that are listening or watching right now are um, in the that boat right where maybe they're they're good at the laying out of the site right, but when it comes to specific styling or it comes to copywriting or if it comes to um, branding, um, there's other people that are more talented than you to put that together, right? Because I guarantee you are not the best person in the world to create that Divi platform, to create, to manipulate. Or, or, to do e or to do every role in the business. Or to do every not, role in know? the business, right? Yeah. And, and, it's, and then that is, it's, it's, a, it's a weird mindset to shift over, right? Mm -hmm. To admit, that somebody is better than you at doing that, uh, that, that the, the Divi platform, the putting that site together, right? And that's the first step to realizing, uh, to, to getting out, getting yourself out of the business, right? So I put that team together. And so for me, I was always looking at the future of where video was heading, right? So maybe it could be where, where is the future of, of your website business, website design business is going, right? Do you, do you want to sell a business or do you want to get to the point to where you have that team in place and you're not having to worry about the day-to-day, -day, 
you're more strategic. You're, you're out going to networking events. You're, you're building those strategic partnerships with other companies to bring in more additional website design work, right? Building, you move from practitioner to building those sales funnels. And Go from a- working in the business to working on the business. That's exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You're, you're hiring somebody that's better than, uh, than doing the, the coding for the site. That's better than writing the copy. Mm-hmm. That's better than, than you that, uh, that finding the right images and doing the exact stuff, right? They're, they're, you're not the go between, you know, anymore, right? You're, you're the, you're, you're the, you're working on the business as opposed to in it. So I started, I got the idea from Magnify, just kind of driving down the road and uh, to out of town client. And, um, cause again, I like the business aspect versus going to shoot stuff and edit stuff. I could care less about that stuff. And maybe your listeners, one of your listeners are at that point are like, yeah, man, I can, gosh, if I don't have to deal with another, uh, another quick, another quick tweet or tweet <laughs> to a, a site. Yes, and, in air uh, quotes there. Yeah, as we, uh, as uh, you know, you and I have uh, gone back and forth on for quick tweets that quickly expand into uh, uh, other things. And same thing with video, right? It's, mm-hmm. it's very similar, right? You know, quick tweets like, hey, "Can't you just do this real fast and do this?" Oh yeah, we can just magically wave the wand over it and instantly gets done, right? They don't realize all the, the, the painstaking editing or you guys, the, the painstaking coding and things like that to make it look yes. right on mobile, on desktop, on tablet, on Firefox, on Chrome, on Safari, and all that kind of stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Um, which I know a lot of now since I'm kind of in that world. <laughs> <laughs> right. And um, so I think I, I lost my... Well, you were talking about like once you get to that point. <laughs> when, what it's it, I like what you're doing because you're setting up for like what to do in that, that situation. And I talk about this in my business course, which is you get to a point as a freelancer, as a one man or one woman shop, where if you're cool with doing that and content with that, that's fine. But eventually, Absolutely. and that was the same way with me and the same way with you, it sounds like. It sounds like you enjoyed that work for a while, but then you get to a point where something changes, something shifts. And for me, it was that same thing. I realized I wanted to be the business owner. And oddly enough, that's when I did the business coaching plan, which we went through the same company, Action Coach. You're at a different yeah. tier, a higher level, but that's what helped me become a business owner, same as you. So yeah, that was a good, you know, it was a good good start there to talk about, you know, you get to the point because if you're gonna sell a business, you have to do that. So yeah, continue. I didn't mean to derail us there. No, but. no, you're absolutely right. Yeah, it's it's so it's really that tipping point is 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 that craving to to get more knowledge. Because again, you don't know what you don't know. So learning from somebody else that has done it knows how to structure it for you so you can step out of it a little bit more, right? Even if 50% more, like how much would you, more would your life open up to other possibilities? Because that's what happened to me was that, yeah, I, I, was, uh, I still did a little, some editing and some shooting, but I had my, my team working on other stuff, which opened, my, opened the doors to start magnifying. How long, uh, Doug? Real quick, how long yep. did you do it yourself? What were you was it about a decade <laughs> <Too long>. or so? <laughs> yeah. So for for myself, um, probably around. Let's see. I started in '05, and I sold it two years ago. So, so twelve we have years. Calculators in our pocket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, tw- so yeah, over a well over a decade by just, yourself. Yeah, just, over a decade. Yeah, and because again, that's that's kind of how I thought I wanted to live my life that's is, is mm. creating videos and, and again got to that point where I was like it's it it's time for a, it's time for a change you're, it's, you're doing your own self a disservice by doing it all yourself because you know god forbid something happened to you right you know who's going to keep the business going you know you really have a you're working for yourself air quotes but you really just create a, a job for yourself with lots of bosses Oh, that's right. a great point, so man. That's, oh, that's so true. Yeah. That's something I tell my students all the time. Like you really have to be careful of putting yourself in a vulnerable position, making a job that you don't like, because yeah. that can <laughs> very, very well happen if you're not careful about all that. Now, so you, you had the idea for Magnify, this awesome video testimonial capturing platform, which is what I use for all my video testimonials. Yep. You had that while you were on a way to a client. You mentioned you were driving and had that idea. Yep. Now, had you already gone through business coaching to that point or did oh, that yeah. come first? So, yeah. So yeah, I was doing business coaching. Uh, I, I had a business coach 
Uh, well, I still have one uh, up to, so it's been like, what, four years now? Okay. So that first year should really uh, help me uh, get to the point get to that point, right. To have, to build that team, which opened up more freedom to pursue other business, uh, opportunities. Right. And, gotcha. uh, I, I have that, uh, that entrepreneurial mindset, right. I, I, I'd like to, to start other businesses and I've done a few things before that didn't work out. Um, and magnify started to take off and I'm like, man, this is where I really want to go. And I wonder if it's right time to, to sell it. And um, that's kind of where that started to happen, right? Was, was Magnify, I was doing Magnify, doing Magnify and uh, Cross River at the same time for about up to a, about a year. So doing both. And it was definitely very busy. But mm-hmm. again, so the team that I had in place was helping take a lot of that load off. So I gave, you know, work on Magnify stuff and pitch it to clients and uh, and use it as a a tool to, to, you know, to grow and it started getting legs and yeah. And it's interesting because we're in a similar boat to where like I've scaled my business to where I'm not doing really any design work anymore or coding. And I'm working on more of the proposals, client facing stuff, project management, things like Mm -hmm. that. It sounds like you did the same. And what's great about that is as you get yourself out of those in the roles of the business and work on the business, yeah, yeah, that will leave you, that will open up some time. I mean, thank goodness you did some of that business coaching and freed yourself up when Magnify, you know, when it came along, because what if Magnify happened four years earlier when you were doing everything with Crossing River? It probably would yeah. have taken a lot longer to yeah. get where you are now, or maybe it just would have fizzled out because you didn't have time. So it, 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 Exactly. So I would say the, the time thing, right, for sure. So because, yeah, I mean, we, we can, I can go off another subject. But uh, so, yeah, so, so what's, uh, what do you want to know what, next? Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm curious about like how long did it take you to did, sell the no. business from when you thought about it? Was it like, did you really have to be intentional about setting up your internal systems, documenting things, getting your client information, numbers and all like how long, yeah, how, yeah. I guess that's the question. How long before you were like, I might want to sell this to, I sold it. Yeah. So it was really, it was like probably three, four months. It wasn't wow. a very long process. Um, I was very, very, Lucky, uh, lucky, blessed, and fortunate to have somebody who was already working for me um, be interested in buying the business. And um, it was a perfect transition, right? And so what I did, so um, I knew that I wanted to get to that point, right? So I had obviously systems in place and things like that. But what I also did, especially with a service-based business, is I had um, contracts in place, and oh, okay. a full pipeline so that when someone they bought the business, they also they paid the sum to purchase the business, but then they also knew they had um they had contracts in place that had income that accounts receivable on the way. So that helped with transition, right? You know, I plugged that person in to help out with the with those uh, specific projects. So they got to know that person, got to learn about that person, and we Obviously, for those clients, right, we didn't say, hey, this person owns the company now, and I'm just kind of flying, you know, with them. It was more like they got brought on as a, as a partner, so to speak. Okay. So that way, there was no, that way, the person that was buying the business wasn't kind of getting, like, cut off, right? Because it can, because I wanted to make sure it wasn't like, hey, um, we're working with Doug. We don't want to work with this new guy because we're not familiar with him. So we that's how we transitioned. It was, I was, and I worked with him on a few projects even Mm -hmm. after the company sold just to help him with that transition. And then obviously he has my number, like he can call me and text me if he has any questions. Cause obviously I want to see him take it to a level that I could never take it to. Gotcha. That's really valuable advice. So you essentially groomed him and kind of brought him in as a partner, got him familiar with all your current clients or all the projects were going on. And then as the transition happened, that way it wasn't like, you know, if they reach out to Doug and yeah. then this guy named Nathan <laughs> pops up and says, Oh, by the way, Doug's disappeared and sold the business. Yeah. I'm the new guy. They'd be Peace like, what out. the heck? <laughs> yeah. I ain't doing nothing no more. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think that's good that you were very intentional about that and you were client focused with that because yeah. 
uh, yeah, and Nathan, Nathan's actually, I hired him to do the intro and outro for this podcast for the video and yeah. he's doing a great job. And yeah, like to your point, I can tell he's a skilled craftsman with video yes. like that's, yeah. and, and you are, I've known you for a long time, Doug, you are the idea guy. You are an entrepreneur <laughs> through and through. So I'm sure that you were killing yourself for over a decade, having all the ideas that could never, you know, happen before while you were running uh, the day to the day of your business. I'm much more in the mindset now of, of letting smarter people do stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, it, it, but I knew for sure, like whether it was him or it was somebody else, um, I knew that to, to get somebody interested in buying the business was showing, you know, three years of what we, what was earned over the, over the course of three years, so they could see that steady growth. Okay. But also having a good, we I had a good three to six months worth of clients and income coming in a pipeline that was nice and filled, right? Because if they're looking at your business to buy it, they're going to see the, the they're going to see all the clients that you have or you're currently working on, right? They, they don't want to get a, uh, uh, a business that has nothing happening with it and they have to just start from scratch because what's the point of buying your business, right? Now, did you guys have any recurring income? Because I know video is primarily project to project. Did you yeah. have any contracts that were either recurring or maybe like to your point, like like several months in advance then? Is that how that worked? Yeah. So like typically when we, we take on a, a client, right? So they're they would split their payments out over the course of, you know, three months or four months on a project, right? Because they're larger, some larger, some funds and some would pay, you know, upfront, some would pay half and half. So that's what we kind of worked out. So, but as far as reoccurring income over the course of a year, no, um, it was definitely in quarterly, usually it's about in quarterly chunks, gotcha. right? So you got a project, they split that out over the course of three months and then you're filling that pipeline up, right? So, um, when you're going out and prospecting, right? But so he had all those tools and and systems in place. You just have to kind of follow it. So really, if you're you're going to tee up your your company to to sell, um, especially if you're a one person practitioner, right? You're going to definitely want to have to want to bring them on um, as that as that partner, right? So they can learn. Uh, your clients get to know that person, and then that's that transition happens really nice and really easily. Because then, because when your clients maybe will reach out to you for a question at a more high level, you can defer to, you know, hey, you know, this person is now in charge of this certain aspect. You definitely want to get a hold of them. Gotcha. And that's See, a little scary at first because oh, you think, sure. oh, they're going to get pissed off or they'll, they, they'll go, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll message him. So, so is, it, is it safe to say that you transitioned yourself to more of like a consultant role when you sold yeah. it? to make sure things were running smoothly. Yeah. And are you still doing any of that or are you pretty hands off with oh, all that? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's been, uh, it's, well, it's, it's been just over a year. So yeah, it's, it's pretty hands off. He's kind of run, running and doing his own thing. And it was pretty much that way for, you know, for right at the kind of get go. So, um, he, he definitely took it and ran, but he's always come back obviously for advice and things like that, which I'm more than happy to give. Right. Because, I've known him for a long time and yeah. and he uh, bought your baby. It's kind of, it's probably we I can't imagine the feeling of like building that weird. up for so long and then like holy crap, it's not mine anymore. It was very that part was very weird getting the uh sitting at the uh you know the attorney's office, you know, uh you're signing the documents and then you know you you get that check and I went and sat in my car and I'm like this is really weird. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to do this anymore and magnify is it hope this thing works oh, out <laughs> wow yeah yeah i mean you went for it man magnify was only what a year old when you went full-time with it yeah magnify so i was doing both so like i was so magnify is just over two years old and um so i've i just been working in magnify full-time for uh just over a year except because I, I sold it in august of last year and i took you know three weeks off i took the summer the rest of the summer off to just have fun and play with the kids and think about, you know, next steps for magnify and then hit it hard in September. So gotcha. it's, it's definitely been a, uh, a, a amazing growth over the past year. And I will tell you, um, if you're going to, if you're going from one business to another, it's one thing I wish uh, I would have done first. Um, but hindsight's always 2020, which is why I listen to this podcast is magnify. So, I chose to reinvest all the money that Magnify has made to the company. 
And that way the company has zero debt, which is putting us in a really awesome position for uh, the new version of, of, of Magnify we're calling Magnify Plus. Uh, and so which it, it's allowed us to have a really cool price point that makes it really affordable for somebody to have to utilize Magnify to get you know unlimited video testimonials, branded video content, case study video functionality, which is sending them three questions. They answer those three questions on video. The platform produces a video without having to have any experience producing or editing a video. Mm-hmm. And then the other one that people are really loving is video email. Send a video email out. So, but it's allowed us to position that uh, price point really affordably. And, um, and I that wish was that all due to that was all due to you, basically, yeah. you know, saving the money from you selling the business, using that as living expenses, I imagine, and then just yeah. so reinvesting the- reinvesting the profits of Magnify into the business to keep it going. Yep. So I lived off. I, I've lived off the sale of that company, so I can take all the money I'm making off Magnify, reinvesting it back into the to the company, so we have no debt. Awesome. Um, but I wish I would have uh, made sure to establish another income stream, even if it's just consulting, right? Mm. But at this, uh, like consulting on video projects, which is what I, I do a lot of now. So I do the do I do video marketing consulting for clients that either want to leverage Magnify or if they want to produce a video that's higher end that Magnify can't do, I'll do those as well. And then I utilize a guy who bought uh, Crossing River to help make those videos because. I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> yeah. And how, how cool is that though, that you started a new business in the same realm? Like it's different because with Magnify, it is an app. It's a service or it's a subscription based yep. platform, software as a service SaaS, yep. but it's still like you can utilize your old business when those opportunities come, which I think is super cool. Now, one yep. question I had, cause I think that was a super important, valuable tip was you basically made enough to live off of for you know a while with yeah. the sale of your old business, the sale of your old business, and you were reinvest because Magnify. Let's be honest, I know it was not cheap to start that. You no. the, you <laughs> developed a custom software. It's not like you built something off of tools that were already there. You yeah. had the idea, and I know all this because I built the Magnify site, yeah. and I've been <laughs> yeah. very involved. I've seen the yeah. the ins and outs of it, but. I, I know that you had the idea of like this custom software and then we got, you know, you paired up with someone here locally who developed it custom. That ain't no cheap thing. That is a investment. Um, yeah. <laughs> one of my questions is, cause I don't want to, I don't want to lose this thought cause I think this is great. Did you have a number? Like when you thought about selling your business and we don't have to talk about actual numbers, but like, yeah. How did you come up? Like, did you just think, okay, this is what I think the company is worth and what it could make over the next couple of years? Is that how yeah. you came up with a number to sell it? Yeah, 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 roughly. So I came up with a, like a, whatever I made it typically in a year times that by three, right? Mm, so okay. I had a number in, in, in mind that I wanted for it. And, um, that's and I told the the person that was interested in buying. That's kind of the number that I'm looking at, and it was a little less than what I originally was going to go for. But I thought, one, he's perfect for it, and and two, it's like I, I then I don't have to if he's if he's interested in wanting it, then I'm not. I don't have to try to go out find a broker. So mm. you got like a, a business broker, they're going to take a percentage of that anyway. Sure. Right. So yeah, I mean, like, I mean, like I said, I was very uh, blessed and fortunate to to be in that position. And the guy has the the same heart for for video and filmmaking that I had when I first started Crossing River. So it's literally was a, a perfect transition and. That's cool. So, so whatever you made, you know, the, the recent year times three, I feel like that's, yeah. Yeah. Now was that to give yourself a buffer as well, just in case Magnify didn't make any money that you were like, I I could fall back on that. And then, you know, do something because you have, you have four kids, you have a family and yeah, there's a lot of responsibility. It's not like you were young and you could just, you know, you didn't have any responsibilities. Like you've got a family. Move off a mac and cheese and whatever. Right. Right. Yeah. As a single person, but yeah, so yeah, that that was it was that right. So I knew I could at least if I was conservative could you know live off it for at least a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, I went I went and paid off some stuff, and you know, it's amazing how quick it goes. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I I appreciate yeah. you mentioning that because I wanted to ask you about that in our networking group. 
you mentioned, I think it was a couple months ago, that a lesson learned with that was that you, you need to be careful with that. Even though it's a big sum, it can go yeah. pretty quick if you're paying off debts quick. or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, is that kind of something you learned yeah, in hindsight as well? I would have well? waited so I had more of a steady cash flow, right? Because mm, like, okay. I mean, in my mind, so in my mind, it, the platform is going to take off you know, quicker than I thought it would. And it did take off quick. But again, chose to put all that money back into the platform instead of taking it on bank loan. Right, so mm. I'm not I'm not beholden to a bank uh, for the, the to making that that payment. Right, I did that when I first started Crossing Over. Then I had this giant payment that was hanging over my head that I had to hit every month. Right. Gotcha. And with Magnify, are you making money from it now? Are you oh, finally yeah. at the place where you're? Um, no, I'm still reinvesting over. it back into there. Right. Sure. So, sure. Um, but yeah, oh yeah, I mean the platform. What, itself is i mean definitely it's been self it's it's been self-sustaining since day one it's just we started off with if you're thinking about doing another business it, we started off with the mvp the, the minimum viable product so if you have an idea for a new business you know think about what is the mvp what is the the bare bones minimum viable product that or service offer you can offer just to see how it does in the marketplace. Mm. And when, when we, we, you were one of the first people to, to hop on to the beta test, magnify and all that stuff. And then when the first month we had like 30, 40 people sign up for the platform, which is really cool. Um, so, and then two months after we launched, we had people sending themselves requests for video testimonials and we're producing videos other than video testimonials which is where that branded video functionality came into place. People can yeah. film their own branded video content. So we really let, we let the, the users dictate what they wanted in the platform, which is what birthed case study video functionality and video email. Mm, that's cool. We really let, let the, the customer, the user dictate it because instead of the other way around saying, hey, I'm going to make this product and I'm going to make everybody buy it, right? What's the MVP? See what the, the customer will do with it. And then change it to where change it and morph it to what they want and what they're gonna spend money on. That's cool. Yeah, because I've seen you make those changes with Magnify to where it went from just a video testimonial capture platform to, like you said, case studies. Now you're looking at video email, which is a super super cool feature. I'll definitely take advantage of that. It's definitely sexy. Like, <laughs> yeah, there's all these like really cool, um, not manipulations, but just additions and revamps you've done to yeah. the business. But iterations. it's iterations, <laughs> yeah. But it yeah. still stayed like, despite all those changes, it's still at the heart. It's easily capturing a video, however, yeah. however you want to do that. Now, I'm interested too. I'm I'm sure we'll talk about the difference between the two business types because that was dramatically different from service to yeah. to software as a from a service business to a product style business, but. Yeah. Did you like when you were going through all these changes because you you changed pricing around a little bit subscription to like buy in yep. bulk options? Um, did you did you almost have to get a certain number of clients before you felt like you were ready to sell Crossing River? Like, did you um, essentially just make sure that there was enough coming in with Magnify that you were like, okay, this you know I can do this. Is that kind of how that? Yeah, works? yeah. That, that's that's literally kind of how it kind of got to the point. It's 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 that leap of faith point, right? I mean, in order for it to grow the way you know I wanted to grow, I need to go after it full time, not just part time. And doing what I was doing with with Crossing River, um, I just I didn't want to do it anymore. I, I didn't care to go out and prospect videos and mm. try to talk somebody into making a video anymore, man. And, um, it was like, well, I think it's just time to, to let it go and move on. Cause yeah, that's so what I gave... wanted to go to. That's yeah. the direction that I wanted to go to. Now, maybe you some of your listeners are like, I still love web design, right? I just, I, I would rather move to be more of a, uh, more of a consultant type job, right? That's when you, you essentially start to replace yourself in all those different aspects. Just like and you're it, doing. Yeah. yeah. And it's interesting. Like for me, one of the reasons I, scaled in transit was because number one, I kind of had to, I got to a place where I remember last year we had 23 projects going on at once. I was like, there's no way I can do this just by myself. So that was one need. And the other thing was, I also felt like I was becoming the business owner, but starting this Josh Hall.co endeavor, which is, you could probably tell, like, it's my passion. I just love yeah. this stuff. And 
it's not that I don't like designing websites and not that I don't like CSS and sales and stuff like that, but I just love this so much more. And yep. maybe that's how you feel about Magnify with like your entrepreneurial mind. Like now you can really put it to use on a day-to-day basis with Magnify because you can make these changes, you can have these ideas and you don't need to sell it to a certain client or, or you know, like a service-based business. Yeah. So I, like to, I uh, imagine it's kind of like that. Yeah, I, I I wanted to to help more people utilize video because like for for Crossing River to do what Magnify does all automated at minimum to send a person out or even if myself to go out and film a video at minimum we'd have to charge five hundred fifty bucks to film a video testimonial. What Magnify does all automated, right? It's going to turn people like oh it's too expensive I can't afford to do that and uh, so what what was kind of funny when I was thinking about launching it is I had. Um, I had a, a potential prospect call from, um, I think it was Idaho or Iowa, one of the I, one of them. And they're like, yeah, we want to get a video testimonial from a client, but they're way out in the middle of nowhere. So like closest mm. town was Grove city. And, uh, it was a small town in Ohio. It would have t- taken like two and a half hours to drive there to film the video. And he's like, he goes, is there a way to like somehow like have them record it off their phone and like you like capture it? I'm like, eventually. <laughs> nice. So I was putting that all together. So it was like just little cues like that, you know? Um, Cause that uh, was the need. I identified the need and that was yeah. probably to where the light bulb went off where it was like, holy crap. Cause it was, cause there, there was, it was that cause there's was, like, I, I know there's other tools that are similar, but there's nothing oh, yeah. quite like magnify to where it's, I mean, like, the the intentional setup of what you guys have developed and what you continue to develop. Like I imagine yeah. you just found a need and that's that's interesting. Was that was is that the birthplace of Magnify, that call? No, it, it was it was one of the really cool confirmations you got you, I got along the way. That was kind okay. of saying this is the right way to to go. Right. Got, okay. Gotcha. So gotcha. And then with with the, the guy that bought the, the the company coming into play and then I had uh, some other things that we're working on uh, on the back end that were uh, also coming to fruition at the same time. And it just, everything just kind of fell together. And uh, that's kind of what happened. Yeah. Well, you, you hit on a really interesting point there, which is something that everyone I've talked to who has started their own business or started a new endeavor basically said that they came to a point where they realized they had to give it a hundred percent because if you don't, it's just, it's half ass. Like yeah, if you're going to yeah. give 50% here and 50% here, those yeah. are each only going to go so far. You really have to buckle down and do it and take that leap of faith, which to yeah. your point, like, you know, you sold crossing river, you had enough to live on for a while. There yeah. was interest and in actual money being made with magnify, which is huge. And I imagine you worked a lot more run, you know, starting magnify also working on crossing river until you finally sold it and, uh, where you're at now, but uh, yeah, I think that's a really, really important point because to jump ship on something, if there's like no viability with a new product, that's yeah. dangerous and probably just not smart that's all around. Smart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Make sure you, you do that MVP, the, the minimum viable front and sun keeps going on. I don't know. I'm trying to, Oh, that's right. Oh, you're good, man. So, so the MVP, you know, it's the, uh, start out with that minimum viable product, just yeah. test the waters out and see if it'll go right. That's, that's, that's definitely a first way to go. And I imagine the cool thing like in that case is like, God forbid magnify didn't work out. Did you have the thought? Like I could always go back to doing video if I really wanted to, or, you know, you have all these skill sets that you developed. Yeah. I imagine there's plenty of plan B options. Not that you focused on those, but no. it's like, you're never going to end up on the streets. No, you know, you, you're, <laughs> you're never going to end up on the streets. And like, for me, um, when I sold it, I said, okay, Again, I go back to that, you, you don't know what you don't know. So I hired, so not only did I have a, a business coach, uh, I also hired a sales coach. Mm. So a guy that was really experienced in sales because um, I knew this one way I, I wanted to launch like the white label version of it because we started getting digital marketing agencies wanting to white label the platform for their own in-house video service that's a scalable tool. And I said, okay, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to go after it with everything I got. There's no, you know, there's no plan B. Let's, you know, burn the chips, you know? Yeah. We're, we're here to, we're here to stay, man. So Magnify has been going strong. February, th- this coming February will be two years, right? And we soft launched Magnify in November. 
of 2013. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. I can't believe it's been that long. Wow. You put the sales site yeah, together that's right. in March. We, we started in February, okay. launched it in March. That's right. Because I remember, I a, a yeah, I remember, I remember working on it in the beginning of 2018. Yeah. Um, which funny enough, Magnify was the last full site that I built. Oh really? Um, yeah, yeah. So it kind like, of so you helped, you helped, like, like, that. You, like you help uh, the logo. Too, yep, so made the logo. Time. So I think this was like the last logo you made too. It, yeah, it was so the this last is, like, logo. Taking it like we just like <laughs> I was sitting at like a, a a local coffee shop and just like drawing and sketching, trying to figure out what the heck of this. So I wanted the yeah. logo to be really really cool, and and then then I got with you and we kicked ideas around back and forth for a while and then everybody loves the logo man i get compliments on it to this day still so i know it's so funny and then for every anyone who sees this on video or wants to look at the the logo i know one of your clients was like i really like the two people shaking hands yeah, in the yeah. m and i yeah. didn't even think i didn't even oh, yeah. recognize yeah. that until i saw yeah. it yeah um so i'll just say that that was uh design genius by myself with yeah. the I, I certainly planned that now oh yeah um, exactly. <laughs> question there's a stark difference between service businesses and a product style business. What what does that look like? Have you really had to adjust from going from a service based, you know, work environment to product based? Like, what's that been like? It's, I that imagine is the day to day is completely different. Yeah, yeah. So, like, obviously, I'm not editing any videos, right? Because people are like, so, like, uh, when I talk to White Label, they're like, so, when somebody makes a video, like, do you guys like take it and like edit it and like work it? I'm like, no, we don't have any Oompa Loompas like in the in the system. <laughs> you know, it's all automated. They're like, oh my gosh, it's automated. That's so yeah. Cool. And so, really, it's 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 more. It's definitely more strategic, right? Because my team is essentially the platform. You know, they're they're, they're taking care of all the 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 day to day. And uh, I'm more uh, building partnerships, looking for unique ways to leverage the platform. You know, with the white label, you know, it's the one-to-many model, right? So one yeah. person gets many people. So uh, I get to focus on that. And then utilizing my knowledge in video and video marketing. And video right now is exploding. I mean, and it's just going to continue to grow and grow and grow. And um, so I get to utilize my knowledge in helping digital marketing agencies or reputation marketing companies um, implement video with their, with their business. So, cause I don't really cool. hire me to consult the, to launch yeah. the white label. I, I like that, that you have taken from your previous business. And again, going back to the fact that this business is in the same realm of your video business, like you taken what you learned from there and now you can apply it to a product and consulting that can, like you said, can be done one to many, which yeah. is like, that's one of the beauties about courses that I found that was just knocked me off my boots was when I, you know, from going from one to one for so long with, with web design, which I still, there's so much value in that. And I, I love yeah. that. And I have learned so much from that, but the ability to go one to many is just incredible for, for a lot of different reasons. Now, having said that, there's a lot of different headaches with that kind of thing. Oh, like yeah. you, oh, yeah. I mean, do you, do you do, do you feel like you do more work with magnify than you did with crossing river? Or would you say you, you keep to a certain amount of hours a week or, I mean, I know it's probably tough to turn your mind off with running. Yeah. Um, I mean, magnify. that's the thing as uh, I mean, there's I mean, as an entrepreneur in a, in a business owner, it's like, it's, I do obviously I keep things separate as much as I as much as I can, right? Mm -hmm. And but your mind's always turning on stuff, right? Because like my developers were, you know, they'll work on stuff on tweaks and changes in the evening while people aren't as active on the platform, right? So we'll do like tweaks and changes in the evening time. So also occasionally I have to jump on like online and check changes out, test them to make sure they're good to go to deploy for people to utilize and then usually a little tweaks, you know, sometimes in the weekends might have to do a little bit of tweaking and stuff like that. But, um, it's coming to a point now where I'm not doing a lot of that stuff on the evenings and weekends anymore. When I first started it out, Oh, absolutely, man. Gotcha. It was, you know, it was selling and marketing during the day and partnerships during the day and phone calls and emails during the day. And at night it was, polish the platform, polish the code, polish the platform, polish the code for a good salad. I mean, we're, since we're launching plus here, uh, pretty quick. Um, and well, by, by, by the time you guys listen to this, it'll be launched. Yeah. One thing I was interested about magnify 
was that you have all these iterations and and I was kind of curious, yeah, like you listen you listen to your your clients, the people who are using it, your customers. Because yeah. we'll yeah. we'll call them customers versus clients. Clients more of like service, whereas yeah. customers are more SaaS, the software as yeah. a as a or service users. business. Or users, yeah. 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 But you yeah, you're listening to them and then yeah, you're launching uh this will come out probably shortly after you launch plus yeah. with Magnify. But so yeah, let's talk about those iterations real quick. So you listen to your clients. I mean, did yeah. people have ideas that you were like, that's just not a good idea that oh, you yeah, just couldn't implement? <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. So yeah, you, but- you're only taking, you're only adding the things that are viable, that make sense, that are probably yeah. practical, that can yeah. be done? Exactly, yep. And, and the, I get them all, like all the time, especially from the white labels. And because it's their own version of, of Magnify, right? So they mm-hmm. have their own ideas, but like the, the heart and core of Magnify, I'm always careful to hold on to, is keeping it the the user interface and the, the the system itself easy for the person who has zippity doodah experience producing a video because like me you or i'm sure your listeners we're all very tech savvy they could probably hop into a a, a, a maybe a, a little more of a complicated software as a service platform and figure it out pretty quick the average person but that's not in any sort of any form of digital marketing whether it be video web what have you, um, they have no <laughs> clue, zero clue. And yeah, I want to make yeah. sure we keep to the heart of that. We want, so like with video testimonials, uh, with branded video content, with case study videos, right? Send three questions. They record those three answers. Magnify produces the video. And then video email, even making video email a simple process because there's obviously other video email platforms that are that are cool, right? But they're, they're definitely a lot more uh, they have a lot more bells and whistles and more complicated, right? The uh, the average user, they just want to send a video email to somebody and that's it. They, yeah. they don't care about drip campaigns within a video email. Like the larger marketing agencies, they may care about that, but the average user, they just want to send a video email. Well, and the cool thing about what you're doing with Magnify, I feel like, is it's kind of like a, almost like a one-stop shop for, it's becoming a kind it's of a becoming, one-stop shop yeah. for all your video needs. Like, like you said, yep. you can do a variety of different styles. I know one thing I loved about it. I'm so glad that Magnify came for me at the time I started doing courses because I would have to have done that same thing. Like if I wanted a video testimonial from a student who went through the course, they would have had to like record it themselves. They would have to have been, cause a lot of people, even web designers, like video is a whole different ball game. Just mm-hmm. like you're, you know, you're doing video, then you find out web design it. Like they're yeah. similar, but they're, they're very different to where like it's been so great for me because I don't even send people the link anymore. I just have the link in my courses. So yeah, at the end of the course, cool. they have the yeah. option. Oh, I, it's, it, yep. Every one of my courses at the, anybody who's listened to this, one of my students who have, who have submitted a, a testimonial, a video testimonial, you've gone through Magnify. Like you just click the link, pops open your camera, wherever you're at, you can record it and then I get it. Then I can publish it on my YouTube or wherever. So yeah. You know, I, I think as a customer, because I still am a customer of Magnify, it's been really cool to see the iterations because I think we're, one thing that's really important with a SaaS product, which is, again, software as, as a subscription or whatever, as a service. is as a service. Yeah. Innovation and marketing is like key because the last thing I would want as a customer of Magnify is for it to just be the same thing and then there really be no movement. Like you really kind of I, I imagine it's a little bit different for you as the owner because with Crossing River you could keep up with trends with video yeah. and stuff like that, but your services yeah, video and all that stuff. Yeah. They were primarily like you, you had the main services, you know, whereas magnify, yeah. I, I imagine you really, it's a whole different ball game to like stay um, on with like the vision and the, and the, mm-hmm. ca- the vision casting of it moving forward. Right. Yep. Yep. So exactly, man. It's like, well, obviously with crossing river, I mean, I, we, we were doing a lot of 360 video when 360 video was really, uh, it's still is pretty hot, right? Especially with VR now with the Oculus and all that stuff. But in 360 video was cool, but we were you know, keeping up with that. And uh, like we said, we did a lot of very story driven videos, video testimonials. Really, it's all, what we did a lot was use, was utilizing real people in video. So uh, Magnify to essentially systematize that. And again, the goal is just to keep it easy for that person to utilize. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I love that it's very customer focused and customer centric, and it's very clear that you actually listen 
to the needs of people. And of course, yeah. you're going to you're going to weed out the ones that are like, there's no way that that's a terrible idea. But yeah. the solid ones, it's it's really cool that you, you know, make time for that. And, you know, if there's a need there, yeah. it's very possible. Uh, anybody that submits like a, uh, a okay, we'll get the uh, you should add this or you should do this. I love those because I may I may be like, yeah, you know, you know, thanks for that. But we can't do that. Blah, blah, blah. Mm. But when you're getting those, I mean, that means they're, they they care about your your business to the point to where they're recommending something they actually care about it yeah and i know i've experienced the same thing with courses if a student says hey i really enjoyed this but i would have liked to have seen this you know like Mm -hmm. on the course or on the cyber oh yeah i should have done that i did that with like for example my my first couple courses i did i didn't have like a, a resource list of all the links that I mentioned. And a couple of students emailed me and were like, Hey, I can't remember where that link was in the, the, you know, in one of the lessons or something. I was like, Oh, I should just make like a resource, like a master list at the end of the course that has every link I mentioned. That way they can just go through and they could see it. And yeah, yep. same, same thing. You listen to your customers, you come up with, with a product form. Now with magnify moving forward, do you have like goals as far as users? Do you have monetary goal? I know it's probably different monetarily because you've, you've changed from a subscription to, you know, you're going to be launching plus and you've yeah. got a couple different, a couple different like, products. yeah. How, yep. how does that work with goals with a, with a product like this? So for magnify. So my goal is to essentially, um, in three years, I want to replace myself or get to the point where I could sell that and move on to something else. Nice. Cause that's kind of, that's, that's my, that's my goal, right? That's as an entrepreneur, I want to move on to something else or, you know, get to, uh, even just getting to, to run by itself. Right. Uh, especially now with the growth we're getting ready, we've had experience and we're getting ready to experience. I mean, we're getting a, a lot of amazing traction for magnify plus. I think it's going to be a, it's going to be a good, it's going to be a good year next year. Josh. Yeah. I'm excited <laughs> about it. Cause what's the price? It like 37 it's, bucks. Uh, it's a 37, 37, uh, 37 bucks a month. We got tongue tied there for a second. So yeah, 37 bucks a month for unlimited video testimonials, branded videos, case study videos, and video email. Yeah, that's a steal, man. I mean, yeah, if you were to, and it's huge because you can do videos from someone across the world or whatever, but even like locally, yeah. if you were to your point, you talked about earlier, if if you just wanted to hire somebody to film a legit testimonial, it's going to be at least 500. And least then if you want to do- yeah. Yeah, any sort of like editing or any, I mean, then you're talking several thousand. I mean, yeah, that's oh, yeah. Oh, the cost benefit yeah. there is huge. Yeah. Because that's, I mean, cause it's expensive to do video, right? Right. The, the higher yeah. people, you know, sound and lighting and video camera, then editing and all that kind of stuff. So these are, these are, these are simple style videos, right? And the number one, we get two compliments all the time. It's, these videos are authentic. We get that a lot. They love the authenticity, especially in a video testimonial, right? It doesn't feel scripted. They're looking at a camera on their phone, their tablet or computer with a webcam. But then it's also, we get a lot of, it is easy to use. We yeah. can figure it out really easily uh, how to utilize the platform. I, one thing I've loved too is seeing a student or even some of my clients who I've only emailed with, like, actually seeing them and hearing them talk cuz now that we have clients all over the US and all over the world I'm not going to meet with those people face to face like all my local clients were you know a couple of years ago everyone yeah. was local yeah. so it's been really cool for me to like I love getting a video testimonial in because it's like oh I can't wait to see it and it then you get to good, see yeah. the person you get to yeah. hear them and then sometimes like with my students I let I I try to recommend writing a review first and then using that as like a script almost for the video testimonial. And that's worked out really well. And I've loved that because I might see a review come in and I see their thumbnail or whatever. And then I actually see the video and it's like, you get to hear their mannerisms, their tone. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just love it. It's been, it's been super, super cool. So. Yeah. Especially now in a very competitive, and I don't care what, what business you're in, it's competitive. Right. And if you're in a business that you say has no competition, you're, that means there's no market. Right. Mm, good and, point. um, well that's taken right from shark tank. Right. So when people go on shark tank and they ask, so who's your competitors? And they go, we don't have any competitors. They're all like, well, I'm out because there's no market. So to stand out in a crowded marketplace, it's, it's even for magnify. We, we regularly, we, we, we utilize our own platform. We're, we're getting video yeah. testimonials as much as we can. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, branded video, we're making, I do expert tip videos at least three to five times a week. And the consistency in doing that is huge. Like I see just dramatic results from doing like one video a week to doing three to five a week, just especially on LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn video right now is just exploding. Um, and it's just, yeah, LinkedIn is definitely a great spot to go with uh, with video now, for sure. Good point, yeah, for, for designers in particular who are doing but, any sort of video, you know, any expertise videos or things like yep. that. Yeah, I know yeah, I've heard LinkedIn is untapped, particularly because it's kind of a dated corporate style platform. So if you can get in there with some of the fresh video and stuff like that. That's what everybody thinks. Like, they think it's like, you know, uh, the dated corporate platform, but it's, it's very much uh, not that. So I, like, I guess I just mean from like the demographic standpoint, like it's very B two B, right? Yeah. So especially if you're in that web design industry, right? Um, your your clients are are businesses, and a lot of them are hanging out on there. So less than one percent of the people that are on LinkedIn actually contribute content. So you're either a thumb scroller or you're a content contributor. Mm. So if you're a content content contributor you're seen as a thought leader and as an expert and you will not like not like oh you might if you do it like this no i i can pretty much guarantee you you sign up for magnify plus you start making three to five videos a week on expert tip videos faithfully for a, a good solid week or two you will get comments you will get likes you will get direct message link direct messages from people who are interested in doing business with you. Yeah. And it's not even LinkedIn. I mean, LinkedIn is huge, obviously, but other platforms as well. I mean, I've yeah. seen that with Facebook. I did, I, and I forget when I launched it. I think it was late spring of 2019. I did my Tuesday quick tips and I committed to yeah. doing a quick tip every Tuesday this year. Yep. And it's been huge. Like, yeah, to your point, like video is just, there's something about when you're selling a service or when you're sharing your expertise, it really just puts you in that role of like the guide, the expert, the expert in yeah. the, the business. And it just creates an amount of trust that you don't get in other mediums. When people see you, they hear yeah. you, they, they can get a sense of who you are as a person. That's what the power of video is just huge. So yeah, I echo that for there's sure. No like and trust for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Doug, this has been great, man. We've covered some really awesome stuff. We talked about what you did with a service business and how you built that up to get it ready to sell. And it's interesting. I thought you had thought about selling it a lot longer. I didn't realize it was only three or four months that yeah, you... Yeah, it was like three or four months, man. It was, it was, I, mean, I probably was thinking about it yeah, longer but, than that, but to take the action, it was probably like action. three or four months from like... Uh, bringing it out like I'm interested in selling it to sold. Yeah. Gotcha. And Three then of course, months. of course you had magnify. It was going, it was already generating money. Yeah. You talked about the importance of like, you know, in your case, you sold it for whatever you made that year times three. So you had some money to fall back on and bank yep. on important lesson that you talked about there with not, you know, maybe being a little more careful with that. Cause I'm sure a big sum of money looks like, yeah. Oh man, yeah. we're rolling. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, but, you know, keeping set aside, magnified debt. Set aside some splurge money, right? Which is what we did, but um, obviously living off of it. And but I, the the caveat to that is, yeah, I didn't take the time to maybe set up more consulting, right? Where I had that, or at least had enough to even at least cover half of mm. my reoccurring bills, right? That that okay. would have extended that out. But like at the same token. Um, I wouldn't have been able to f go full bore that first year because I had to go do some consulting. Right. Um, now I'm doing it, but I have got a lot of process in place and learned a ton. Like I said, this 2019 for me has been one of the greatest learning years in my life. And it's been utterly amazing. So like I follow like action coach guy, Brad Sugars, and uh, he's a phenomenal, phenomenal guy. He's got some great books. And I recommend another great book too if you're thinking of starting a uh, another business. And um, he 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 has a quote where he says, uh, "Your your greatest year of earning is always preceded by a greatest year of learning." Ooh, I like that. So, because you're you're learning in that year, and then that next year, applying all that knowledge that you've learned the year previously. 
Nice, nice. What's so, that book called that you that you mentioned? So he's got. I mean, he says that in a lot of what it, a lot of his speaking stuff, but mm-hmm. he's got a lot. Of, just just Google search Brad Sugars or go to Amazon. Just Google search Brad Sugars, and uh, he's got a lot of a lot of really great books there. But a really great okay. book that I really loved was actually by Damon John called The Power of Broke. And it's a really great book on essentially the scrappiness you need to have when you're first starting a new business from scratch, right? Because mm. the, uh, the trap you can get into is, is throwing money at a, an issue or problem you want solved, right? But if you take money out of the equation, how are you going to solve that problem with no money? How are you going to do it at the, the MVP to accomplish that same goal? I like that. I like that word scrappy because I think that you need to have that mindset anyway in business yeah. as a freelancer yeah. or an entrepreneur. But yeah, particularly when you're launching something on a shoestring budget or yeah. something that you know you may not have because you, you you had built up a business previously for a decade, whereas this was less than a year old. You know, by the time yeah. you went full time with it, so. Yeah, that's really cool. I'll link to that in the show notes. I'll, I'm going to pick that one up as well. That sounds awesome. And it's a, good a couple, one. You, you had mentioned the importance of a coach. I think that's worth yes, absolutely, mentioning that yeah. again because I I went through. See, you're, I think you're like on the second tier of the coaching platform with Action, Action Coach. I went through like a six month plat, uh, program, yeah. and yeah, my biggest tech, takeaway was it made me a business owner. I was very apprehensive initially. And number one was because I just didn't feel like I was ready to to take those next steps. But once I got to the point where I did, it mm-hmm. really helped me become the business owner and feeling more comfortable with delegating instead of doing everything myself, yeah. which is the trap that most of us fall into. Um, yeah, getting a very, business coach is definitely a I would say it's, it's a good first step. Whether you're you're hiring somebody, um, where you're meeting with them two times, like I, I, I my coach I met with two times a, a month, and. Uh, through through a Zoom call, and we did coaching over that. And we did through email and phone calls, but like mm-hmm. the one on one stuff was done via via Zoom. And then um, I hired a sales coach as well, so I had two people helping me grow. And then obviously reading like crazy on uh, when or I'm using Audible. I do Audible a lot, just driving from point A to point B. Uh, do Audible, right? Yeah, and it's I know with a coach. I meant to say that one reason I was a little apprehensive about doing that program was because they weren't website designers. They were just business coaches in general. So I was like, yeah. how can they really help my business when they, and this was just a thought I had, I, yeah. uh, which I would tell, you know, those folks that that was one of my thoughts was I was like, how can they really help me when they, they don't know anything about web design or what it takes? Well, yeah. yes, but there's a lot of broad stroke strategies yeah. and tactics that are proven that can really help. And it, there's such value in getting another set of eyes on your business Absolutely. to where, they could like just yesterday I met with a local mentor and he had a couple ideas for my Josh Hall.co stuff because I'm probably gonna be I don't, by the time this comes out, maybe I'll even have more details on it. But I'm looking at doing like a, a membership, more of like a mastermind with developers yeah. who want to take things to the next level with more accountability and coaching yeah. and things like that. And he gave me some strategies and I was like, oh my gosh, why didn't I even I didn't even thought about that? Like it's so clear, you know, like plain yeah. as day, I could have done that. But when you're in your business, you just you don't see all those things. So yeah, the value yeah. of a coach. I mean, I I'm in a I have an online coach right now I've been with for over a year. And okay, cool. yeah, he's from Australia. He's an online marketer. But the cool thing is he he had one reason I went with him is he's dealing with very high end clients, like multi million dollar clients. So mm-hmm. I'm getting access to some of those top tier ideas that are filtering around to me. But he also had an SEO and a website business that he sold. So I kind of know like he knows the, my struggles with, with yeah, this, whereas yeah, yeah. A, a, another business coach might not. But yeah, don't mean to derail us, but value of a coach no, is huge. Absolutely, and I, yeah. I loved hearing about what you've done with Magnify up to this point to where your customer focus you know, went from just capturing video testimonials to white label, which for those who are unfamiliar with that term, the white label clients Doug's referring to essentially means that a company that wants to collect video testimonials for themselves, like they can use the Magnify platform, but it doesn't say Magnify. It'll say yeah, whatever that company it. is. Yeah, and yeah they, the, cus- the customer would have no idea you know, where they're getting that from. So very valuable. I think the plus thing sounds really, really option. I'm sure a lot of my audience is going to get a lot of value from that. So definitely check that out. Um, man, we've covered some really cool stuff, Doug, with, with yes, selling a service business and some really good just business things in general. Do you have like a final thought or anything that you would say to people who maybe are thinking about selling a business or who you know might want to consider that? 
Um, yeah. So first thing I would do is, is sit down and just begin to flesh out that idea, get it on paper, right? Because it doesn't become real unless you get it out, get it, get it down on paper. Right. And, and do what you, know, you and I both did. We got mentors, we got business coaches that helped us grow, helped us to get to the point where we could do another business or could pursue another endeavor. Right. Could it, it doesn't have to be another business. It could be, you know, um, you want to do more speaking engagements, right? You know, how, how are you going to, how are you going to get more speaking engagements if you're in the day to day all the time? Right. So, which could lead obviously to more business opportunities for your business. So, Get it down on paper and get yourself a coach that could really help you grow. So, awesome, awesome. You don't know what you don't know. That's probably a good exactly. motto. Yeah, this you one. You don't know what you don't know. You could, yep. you could find it out the hard way by learning yourself over a decade, or you can just yeah. find somebody who knows it and then expedite the process. Right. You could take you could take the uh, the thousand foot staircase, or you could take the elevator and push a button. <laughs> I think that's a perfect place to end. Uh, well go. said, man. Dude, thanks so much for the time. Thanks for being transparent and congrats on what you've done with Magnify and cheers to uh, what's been an awesome 2019. So let's see, if you did, if you had an amazing year of learning this year, then 2020, maybe we'll do this interview next year at this time and we'll, you'll see you on a beach. Sounds like a plan. I like it. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Thanks. Thanks to all the, uh, all all the, uh, all the Joshaholics out there. (laughs) (laughs) We'll see if that term catches on. I don't know. (laughs) All right, cool. All right, cheers, man. Thanks. Hey, guys and gals, just wanted to pop in with a couple things before you head out. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider leaving a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to this podcast. I would love to hear your feedback, and it will also help other web designers find the show. Be sure to check out the show notes for this episode. Just go to joshhall.co, click on podcasts, and search this episode number, and you'll find all the links, descriptions, and resources we talked about. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, and you'll be notified when the next episode is live. Thanks again for tuning in, and I'll catch you guys on the next episode.